Naps, provided that they're less than one ultradian cycle, provided they're 20 minutes or 30 minutes or even an hour, can be very beneficial for a lot of people. You don't have to take them, but many people naturally feel a dip in energy and focus late in the afternoon. In fact, if we were gonna look at wakefulness, what we would find is that you get that morning light exposure, hopefully, your cortisol goes up, people start feeling awake, and then around two or three or four in the afternoon, there's a spike in, in everything from alertness to ability to learn, some metabolic factors drop, and then it just naturally comes back up, and then it tapers off as the night goes on. So for some of you, naps are great. I love taking naps. Some people, they wake up from naps feeling really groggy. That's probably because they're not sleeping as well as they should at night or as long as they should at night. And so they're dropping into REM sleep or deeper forms of sleep in the daytime. And then they wake up and they feel kind of disoriented. Other people feel great after a nap. So that's another case where just like with caffeine, you sort of have to evaluate for yourself. As we discuss this, you're probably realizing this is a lot like nutrition, where nowadays it's just crazy. I mean, if you go on social media, it's like you've got people who are pushing carnivore, you've got other people who are pushing vegan, other people who are pushing, you know, uh, paleo, every variation of every diet. And there's a lot of data to support any and all of those, and the arguments go on and on. And there's probably a lot of genetic variation and lifestyle variation that's going to dictate whether or not something is good for you, whether or not you like it, whether or not you'll stick to it. The same thing is true for circadian and sleep and wakefulness behaviors. 